Here are the odds for the Monday nighter between the Broncos and your Buffalo Bills brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Buffalo currently a seven and a half point home favorite against Denver. Remember the Bills have alternated wins and losses the last six games. The Broncos have actually won two in a row. One against the Packers, one against the Chiefs. Free game coverage begins at 7, 6 p.m. Eastern time on TS. Take a look at the mustache on this retired <laughs> NFL football player that we call Luke Wilson. Look how magnificent. Buddy, this is coming in amazingly for November. You know, Jay, I'm in the sweet spot right now. I'm very nervous about what it's going to look like in about seven to eight days. I don't think it's going to be pretty. I'm thinking Joe Dirt, and I'm all for it, okay? I am yeah. all for <laughs> that, buddy. <laughs> That's exactly what it's going to look like. Almost a worse version of that. Somebody call David Spade, currently starring in Snake Oil on CTV. Uh, Luke, uh, oh. how about this Bills team? I want you to have a look at the upcoming schedule. So I mentioned they play the Broncos on Monday Night Football. Then they get the Jets. But then you got to take on the Eagles, Chiefs, and Cowboys. So safe to say the next two games are extremely important for the Mafia and for the Bills. But you said something to me, Luke, on Monday's show that sort of piqued my interest. Uh, you mentioned Bill's offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, that everyone on that team seems to love and seems to revere. But you were, you were questioning a little bit about Ken Dorsey, and I'm curious if you could get into a little bit more. What is it about Dorsey, what he's doing right now, that makes you think that he could be a potential problem for this team? Jay, when I look at teams and I try and critique, you know, what's going on, and clearly the Bills are not playing to their potential, if you can pinpoint one position or one issue, then you can kind of say, you know, that position group, that individual needs to pick it up. But when I look at the Bills' offense, it's really across the board. They're just not performing to their capabilities. And that's where my head goes, that this now is not necessarily a player ordeal. It's a coaching ordeal, whether it's a preparation ordeal, whether it's a game day, you know, play calling ordeal. We'll never know. We're not in that locker room. But the consistency for this offense has not been there. And like I've said many, many times, the players are. Stephon Diggs is incredible. He is one of the best receivers in the league. Josh Allen is an MVP type talent at quarterback. James Cook. They drafted this guy. There was a ton of hype, and we've seen flashes of him because he is super athletic and can be a huge weapon. But again, we haven't seen him develop into a consistent running back. Gabe Davis, uh, flashes of greatness, very inconsistent when it comes to his stats. Dalton Kincaid, again, starting to come along now, but have we seen him develop to the level we all want him to at this point? I would say the answer is no. So again, when you can go right across the board like that, Jay, my head goes to either these guys aren't being put in good spots or, you know, they're not executing because they're not prepared. And you've got to place most of the blame at the offensive coordinator's feet because he's got the weapons, he's got the personnel. Why can't they be consistent on offense and be one of the best offenses in the league? Well, and we know, you know, and we're going to talk about the AFC's other top teams. But we know that the Bills and the Dolphins both recently lost, while the Chiefs and the Ravens and the Bengals all recently won. And this is like a muddled picture. The NFC is so much more clear. We're going to get to the NFC in a second. But at the midway point of this season, like, who to you is the team to beat in the American Football Conference? So, Jay, I think there's a great argument for the Bengals. Obviously, Joe Burrow was hurt early, and they're absolutely rolling right now. But to me, I give a slight nod, actually, as far as the team to beat to the Baltimore Ravens. And my reasoning for that is not only are they beating teams, but they are crushing them. You look at the Lions, who are a very good football team. You look at the Seahawks last week, who are also a good football team in this league, and they demolished them. And the next point I'll add to that is this run game for Baltimore has come to life. I mean, they've been extremely explosive. They've rushed for a ton of yards. And last week, they play a Seahawks defense that was very, very stout coming in this game against the run and put up 297 yards of rushing. I mean, that's unheard of. So again, when I think of team to beat, you got to think now, Jay, we're pushing in the midway point, you know, soon to be in the third quarter, fourth quarter of the season. 
And it's not lost on me how these guys feel in the locker room. Bodies start to get worn down. Trust me, I've been there. You go through camp, you get through eight games. Now all of a sudden, colder weather comes. Again, you're, you're going along to week 10, 11, 12. The physicality that Baltimore can play with on offense, that run game, is going to be a huge ordeal down the stretch. And that's why I give them the slight nod for me right now over the Bengals as the team to beat in the AFC. And then in the NFC, Luke, I mentioned it. It's much more clear the Eagles are the Cadillac of the conference. Uh, they've got a bye coming up. They sit at 8-1. In fact, there's only one two-loss team in the entire NFC, and it's your Detroit Lions, Luke. So my question for you is, <laughs> are your Detroit Lions the only thing standing between the Eagles and a one seed in the upcoming playoffs? Yes, the answer is yes to that. And if you look at the Lions' schedule, yeah, I mean, they are. It's kind of crazy. But if you look at the Lions' schedule, which the, I, I get, I still get nervous saying this, Jay, but it's not, I want to emphasize, not the same old Lions. Yes. So they should not slip up here. But their schedule, the Lions now are very, very weak. It's a very weak schedule. They should win a lot of games. Their big test comes way later in the year against Dallas. So to me... The Lions should be ripping off a lot of wins, really being able to do some great things on both sides of the ball, where the Eagles have a bit of a gauntlet coming up schedule-wise. If they slip up in one of those games, you know, they've had some turnover issues. All of a sudden, you're going to see these Detroit Lions really vying for that one seed and that bye. Luke, before we go, we know how much you loved what Josh Dobbs uh, did on Sunday, beating the Falcons after only five days uh, with the Minnesota Vikings. Now, you said something about that. You said it's something you'd never seen before. We got a response from viewer Keith on Twitter. And viewer Keith on Twitter said, Baker did it last year. Now, for those who forgot, Baker Mayfield claimed by the Rams last season. And after just two days with the team, had to relieve starter John Wolford and trailing 16-3 in the fourth quarter, led the Rams to an incredible comeback win, capped off by that 98-yard game-winning touchdown drive. So we just wanted to make sure we acknowledged viewer Keith, who is right about this. But, uh, Luke, I remember that was such an exciting moment from last season. I, you and I were totally fired up. I remember that uh, like it was yesterday. Yeah, shout out to viewer Keith on that. I do think there's a little bit of difference there, Jay. I don't know if you remember coming into this thing, but I actually think the plan was for Baker to get in. He did have a very short period there, barely showed up. Wofford had a uh, neck issue. Yeah. So I do think that they prepped him thinking, hey, you might go in. We got to get something done. So to me, with the with the Josh Dobbs thing, what made it kind of more fun was, as you could see by the, you know, cadence on the sideline, I mean, there's a million things. They had no intention of this guy even getting close to the right. field. So <laughs> there is a little bit of a difference there. But I agree with Keith. We cannot forget that was a very special night for Baker. He, I think they were down 16-3, to come back, two late touchdowns, which was a lot of fun. I think the last one was their Van Jefferson. Great throw by Baker. Uh, another very cool moment in the NFL. Yeah, it's every once in a while, Luke, uh, Baker Mayfield shows us why Cleveland picked him first overall. He, just, You know, he's got that arm. He's got that moxie. A little bit like Luke Wilson yes, when he he's does. rocking a mustache. <laughs> No a little, he's got that moxie. No question. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you after uh, that incredible Thursday nighter on a Thursday night. Cheers. I, I can't wait to see this one. Yeah, look at this. Luke is so fired up, and you should be too. The most amazing football game in the history of life. And the odds are courtesy of FanDuel. Two and seven Bears. Now a three-point favorite over the one and seven Panthers. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 Eastern. And then after the game, no matter how bad it might be, we will be on and we will talk about it. And I cannot wait to get Luke's thoughts about this one. Maybe it'll turn out to be the best game of the year. We don't know, right? We don't know. You got to tune in to find out.